All right, today we're going to start talking about the derivative, which is a big deal. You know, one of the uh, biggest deals that we're going to talk about. The derivative is about how things change over time. And I thought we could go through a little example. Um, I've, I've got a bunch of data, a bunch of points, a bunch of numbers that uh, you can see in the old uh, YouTube description. Um, download that file, check it out, because um, I'm going to be I'm going to be talking about it. Maybe you should, you know, look at that next to your next to your video player. What this is is a bunch of numbers, which I actually made this myself. This is real world information. I um, got in my car. I had my wife driving the car, so everything was uh, was safe. But um, as we were driving, I watched the uh, the odometer. And every time the thing clicked by a quarter, uh, by one tenth of a mile, I hit a button on my computer and it recorded just how many seconds had passed since the beginning of the trip. All right, so you can see the first first thing there, it says at time zero, I had gone zero miles. And then at time uh, something, at time 22, 22 seconds is what it took me to go the first 0.1 miles. All right, and then you can see how long it took me to go 0.2 miles, etc. right? Um, I did my whole trip there. It was about uh, you know 16, 17 mile trip, and it took me however however long it took me. All right, that's what those numbers represent. I want to ask a few simple questions about these numbers. Everything we're going to do here is uh, is more or less on the level of common sense. At least at first, it's pretty clear, pretty easy to answer these questions. I think. All right, first common sense question about this data here: What was my average speed? over the first mile right what do you think well think about it uh, you don't have to know anything about the derivative to uh, to answer this question um, just a sort of basic uh, common sense you can look look at those numbers there you'll see you know how long did it take me to go the first mile I got my print out here um, I see one mile after 122 seconds right so we went one mile in 122 seconds and then so what's my average speed well the speed you know the the speed is like miles per hour right so you should just be able to divide the miles by how long it took and that'll be your average speed so you're just going to do one divided by 122 um the units of that would be miles per second which is probably you know not how you typically measure um miles per uh, i mean speed is typically you know miles per hour but anyway if you do this this would be miles per second and that, that would be the correct answer just in miles per second probably you want miles per hour in order to do that you multiply by 60 to convert the seconds to minutes and then you multiply by 60 again to convert this the uh, minutes to hours um plug that into your calculator if you like you should get this 29.5 this is miles per hour all right and that sounds you know about reasonable i don't i don't drive uh, super fast i don't drive i drive a normal speed all right a respectable manly normal speed okay that's that's it nothing uh nothing too fancy about that. okay a related question again you can pretty much do this by common sense it's slightly more complicated but what was my average speed over the second mile okay um you know you got to look at the paper there on the paper, you can see I went two miles. Two miles occurred at time 228, all right? But you don't actually just want to do two divided by 228. I mean, this the second mile, that is from the time after I drove the first mile, but until I drove the second mile, during that span of time for the second mile, ignoring the first mile, but just for the second mile, what was my average speed at that time, all right? Um, so the total distance traveled over the second mile is still one mile. And then I'm going to divide by how long it took me to drive that second mile. And you can see I reached two miles at time 228, but I began one mile at time 122. So what's the total elapsed time from 122 to 228? It's, uh, you know, you do the math, right? It's, it's whatever this is, 228 minus 122 seconds. Uh, that is, what, 106 right so this is 1 over 106 if you want miles per second uh, which you don't really but again uh, multiply by 60 times 60 to get um, miles per hour I should put miles per hour right and again you, you can plug that into your calculator if you want to 
Um, I don't really care so much what exactly the numbers are here. I just want to know that you uh, know how to get the answer. Anyway, I plugged this into my calculator. I got 33.9 miles per hour. Again, sounds pretty reasonable, right? So this is the average speed over the second mile. Let's talk um, in general. You know, I could ask you any old uh, point along that sheet of data there. What was my average speed, say, from this from this moment to this moment? That's Let's do one like that. Okay, let's say what's my average speed from time uh, 910 seconds to time 959 seconds, all right? I just more or less chose sort of two random times on the paper there. You can still say what's the average speed from one to the other. Again, you're going to take the distance traveled and divide by the time that it takes you to drive that distance. In the previous two examples, that distance was always one mile. But here, it's not going to be one mile, but you can say what it is, right? Look on the paper. What was the distance traveled between 910 and 959? You can see at time 910, I was at distance 10.6 miles. At time 959, I was at distance 11.4 miles. So the total distance, would you mind if I, I'll write it this way, the change in the distance this, this is a Greek uh, capital delta. It's a common uh, thing which is used to represent a change in some quantity. In this case, the change in the distance, and we're going to do the divided by the change in the time, right? That's what we were doing in the other two examples. I don't know if you thought of it that way, but it was always I traveled. How, how long did I travel? And then how long did it take me to travel? Um, what will it be in this case? Well, actually, the change in the time is whatever it is from 910 to 959. I'm just going to write it as that right that would be 49 seconds but this is how you get the 49 you subtract the bigger from the smaller and I can do the distance the same way you subtract the bigger distance minus the smaller distance the bigger look on your paper 959 the distance was 11.4 minus 910 the distance was 10.6 so there you go work this out right the the units again as usual will be miles per second right if you want miles per hour you would multiply this by 60 and then by 60 again um, what, sorry, that's 10.6, right? So on the top here, you're going to get 0.8 divided by whatever that is, 49, right? And then uh, to get miles per hour, I'm going to multiply by 60 by 60. And then the answer will be actually miles per hour. Plug all that into your calculator. I did this. I got 58.7 miles per hour, all right? I got on the highway. Right now, what we just did was talking about the average speed of the car. You should think of that um, in this context. What is that? The rate of what is changing when I'm driving in the car? What we were talking about was changing in that time was the uh, mileage on the uh, odometer of my car, right? To talk about how fast you're going on average is the same as talking about how, how, um, how quickly that odometer is changing, right? That's, that's what the odometer, that the, pur the purpose of the odometer, right? So, the average rate of change, and there's a general formula, and you, it doesn't have to be about how fast something is moving, it could be how any any other kind of a thing is changing, all right? And here's the formula, I'm going to write this as a definition. So, for a function, any function, f of x, you can measure the average rate of change of that function, and you have to say the average rate of change from this point to this other point, which is what we were doing in those um, examples before. So what's the definition? The average, it's called the average um, rate of change. I'm going to write it like this, if you don't mind, ROC for rate of change. The average rate of change of f of x from x equal a to x equal b. Like I said, you always, when you're doing the average rate of change, you always have to have a starting point and an ending point, like we did in all those examples we just did is here's the formula for it remember what it was it was a fraction where on top was the uh the change in the distance divided by the change in the time if you think about that what those things represent in this case this is what it has to be f of b minus f of a you imagine a, you know a is the earlier time b is the later time you subtract the values of your function at the later minus the earlier and then down here you divide by this is like the, the later time to, um, minus the earlier time. And that's it. This is called the average rate of change. And it's pretty easy to compute. All I mean, all you have is a fraction here. 
which, and you should just be able, in typical examples, you should just be able to plug stuff into your fraction and then that's it. You can put it into your calculator immediately. You don't have to do a whole lot of fancy um, algebra or anything like that. You just plug it in and that's all there is to it. Let's just try a very simple example. Average rate of change of this function, f of x equal x squared, say, from x equal 3 to x equal 5. All right, what are you going to do? Not much. You just remember that formula that I just wrote before? Plug everything in. All right, what are the a and the b? The formula, now I'll refresh your memory, the formula was f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a, right? This is what we're going to use here. What are the a and the b? The a and the b are your two different x values, which are right here and here, right? The 3 and the 5. So just plug them in here. f of 5 minus f of 3 divided by 5 minus 3, right? When you plug in for the b and the a, typically you choose the, uh, the b to be the bigger one. It turns out, actually, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent on the top and the bottom with which which you choose to be the a and which you choose to be the b anyway what can you do with this we're not quite done you just got to plug in what is f of five well you go over here here's the equation for f of x f of five you plug in five so you get f of five is five squared minus f of three is three squared divided by five minus three and that's the answer whatever that number is that's the answer um i guess you could work this out 25 minus nine over 2, 16 divided by 2 is 8. That's it. Uh, all right, that was pretty awesome. But what does it all mean of a f for when you're talking about a function like that with just an equation? What does the average rate of change actually represent? You know, the other example, it was the speed of the car or whatever. But can you say anything about what is, what is that really about, the average rate of change? Actually, you can. Uh, if you look at the graph of that function, I happen to know x squared looks like this, right? And I was talking about x equal 3 and x equal 5. Let's say those are here and here. All right, 3. This value here is 3 squared, which is 9. This value up here is 5 squared, which is 25. All right. And um, I would like to know, like, can you look at this picture somehow? Can you see the average rate of change? It was 8, remember? Can you see 8 on that picture anywhere? Well, not really. Um, not directly, but... Here's where that number sort of, it, it does actually represent something on this picture. The rate of change was f of 5 minus f of 3, right, divided by 5 minus 3, okay? Where can you see these two numbers geometrically on the picture? Well, the 5 minus 3, actually, you can see down here as this distance, all right? This is the denominator right there. 5 minus 3 is that distance, and it happens to be 2. Um, can you see the numerator anywhere in this picture? Well, I believe you can. f of 5 is 25 and f of 3 is 9. So actually the numerator is this distance, right? The difference from 25 to 9 is this distance right there. I hope I'm not going to draw too many uh, arrows in here, okay? Um, this should actually look kind of familiar to you um, when you have a graph like this and you're looking from this point to this point these two quantities really th th so this one down here I could have just as easily drawn it up here right that's this denominator and then this one here is this vertical distance so as you move from this point to that point the denominator is how far you moved in the x direction the numerator is how far you moved in the y direction does that sound familiar to you does that remind you of anything You've seen these two directions before when you move from one point to another. There's how far over did it move and also how far up did it move. Does that uh, remind you of anything? I think it does. I hope it does. Um, the top here, actually, this, this fraction here, sometimes you refer to this, the amount that it rose up there, as like the rise from this point to that point, the rise. And then this one down here is like the run how far across it went. If, you, um, if you've ever heard of the rise over the run, you know that that is sort of a common slogan. This is uh, something else that you've heard of. So let me say it. The average rate of change is the slope. 
from one point to another. Right? How do you like that? So this is kind of the meaning if someone asks you about what's the average rate of change of a function, just some abstract function from one point to another point. They're really asking about the slope. What's the slope of the uh, line that you would get? That is to say, if you were to connect these two things by a straight line, this is not a straight line, it's a curve, but if I were to connect them by a straight line, this number, the eight from, we did this example already, um, is the, the slope of that line.